All right, good afternoon, fourth grade. I'm so excited today. We are going to launch our very, very first number of stories of the year. Uh, while I'm leading Ms. Kamute, we'll be maybe messaging you individually and trying to tell you or remind you some of these expectations, but we're going to go over these expectations right now, so there's absolutely no reason why we're not clocked in and focused uh, through our very first number of stories lesson that is going to be out of this world. Get it? Let me see. All right, good. Now, first things first, right? Hands are full. There's, we're not eating, right? We're not distracted by anything else around us, too. You're in a solid comfortable, quiet workspace, so you're ready to learn and you're ready to apply this mathematician's plan in your head and make, make mind moves of what we're doing. And three, make sure you're focused, make sure you're clocked in. This is a really cool part of your day where we get to free think and try to solve math problems in as many different ways as possible. So I'm really, really excited, all right? So what I want you to do right now is I want you all to just close your eyes with me. Close your eyes with me. Let's make a mind movie together, okay? I'm gonna read this problem out loud. And I want you guys to visualize what is actually happening. Me and my friend Elena, we're going shopping. We're looking for Valentine's Day candy. She wants to get her mom something nice, right? She wants to get her mom double the candy. So she got this one box with not one layer, but two layers. And each layer, there's 12 pieces of candy. While we're there, she realized, you know what? I might as well get more. And then she buys eight total boxes. And that made me think, how much candy does she have in total? Huh? Everyone open your eyes with me and say, Scott, fold your hands. Good job. Hi, dog. He's there right away. Miss Kenuta, so you see anyone there who's just writing that perfect style, ready to just learn, ready to clock in? And I am just look perfect. That's excellent, right? That's excellent. So now I'm going to read this problem out loud, just the way it is, right? And then we're going to try and ask ourselves some questions here about uh, try to answer this question. All right? So there's one box of candy, and it has two layers with 12 candies in each layer. My friend Elena, what eight of these boxes? Oh, uh, for gifts, excuse me. How many candies did she buy in total? Well, what do you think? What do you think here? Well, let's see. Let's go to go to Evangeline. What do you think here? I'm gonna unmute Evangeline. There you go. Go ahead, Evangeline. Oh, I'm not, I'm not hearing you for some reason. Let's go to Markel. Go ahead. Let's go, Markel. Um, this question is um is. Wait, what is the question again? Just like, wait, what's happening in this question? Tell me what's happening in your own words in this pop. What happening is that um, a friend has one has a box of candy, and, mm -hmm. and that candy has 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 two different sections of it, and there's twelve candies in each section. So we need to figure out how many candies did she buy um in total of those two sections. Adam. Madison, what do you think? Let's go to Madison. Miss Knute, did you mute Martel? One sec. Oh, yeah, no God. problem. Good. Madison, let's go. I want you to evaluate. So you're going, ah, what do you think? I partially agree with you, Michael. You said like ah. the Madison, you there? Hello? You there, Madison? Yes. Go ahead, I'm sorry, I lost you for a little bit. Go ahead, can you start over? I, I, I partially agree with you. I agree with the first part of what you said, but you missed a little um, key detail. You um, missed that Elena brought eight boxes of candy, and now we're trying to figure out how many um, candies does she buy in all. Exactly, right? So it sounds like Madison cleared up a little bit. We're looking for the total box of candy, but I have a very important question for you. Right, and I want to put you a thumb. Put, give me a thumbs up here. Put a thumbs up if if you when you think you know. All right. Are there more or less than twelve candies per box? More or less than twelve candies per box. What do you think? Thumb to your chest when you know. Or show me the do the. Let's do the digital one instead, so I can see. 
12 candies are more per box. What do you think? I see Eugene's really thinking deeply here. Krishlan thinks she's got an answer. Let's go Brian. I got Brian right here. Brian, what do you think? More or less than 12 here. I think it's more than 12 because... Make sure you trust the client. Good. This is um, eight, eight boxes. Two layers. There has to be more than twelve can can candies in each layer because there's twelve candies in each layer and there's eight boxes. So, so Priscilla, how many do you think is in each box? Tell me how much is in one box you think. I'm on pause, I'm unmuting Priscilla. Go ahead, Pete. Priscilla, can you hear me? I can't hear you, so let me go somewhere else. Let me go, Tristan, how many do you think are in each box? I think there's 24 in each box because it says one box of candy has two layers of 12 candies in each layer. Not bad. Let's see if we can put this together as a whole equation in our math, and I'm really excited to see you show me at least four strategies. Four strategies when we go into our breakout rooms. Be creative, right? Think about the different ways that you can solve this problem, but what's necessary, every single piece of work must, must, must always have a labeled equation. Always, always label your work. Make sense of it as you go. Ms. Canute, that's all I got. I'm ready for breakout rooms. I want to make sure there's a teacher in each room. Yep. All right, I'll see you guys there. Let's clock in. Oh, let's see the team that we got here. All right, let me make sure first things first, you are all muted. We have no disorganized chaos here. All right. So what's going to happen right now is we're going to take this time, about 10, uh, we're going to take about 15 minutes here. You guys are signed in penalty. You're going to solve this problem in as many ways as you can. Um, do your best to show me your work as you're gone. Okay. Please make sure your camera is on. Thank you, Prince. He's clearly visible. Cam, can you sit up a little bit for me, please? Right, we're in class. I can't tell if you're laying down yet. We gotta be sitting up tall. All right, and right now you're working for 15 minutes silently and independently, trying to solve this problem as many different ways as you can. All right, 15 minutes. Time's ticking, let's go. Let's make the most of it. Let's see what we got here. Mad Dog is, make sure I can see you. I see that's Jaylene's iPad. Oh, no, that's Brian. Sorry, Brian. Make sure I can see you always. Uh. Yannick, what's going on? Uh, it says breakout rooms will be closed in seconds. Uh, stay, 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 stay. All right, I don't think, I think it's a mistake. Unless I hear something else, I want you guys to stay right now. It's all right, these things happen sometimes when we're trying to, we're, we're making new adjustments. Thank you, Yannick, for letting me know. It looks like everyone stayed as well, great job. Everyone's really focused, clocked in. Prince. You're live. I did, my mom made me, when I said I did the external response, my mom made me do it. And I did all of, my mom made me do all of number storage work, except for Friday. Good, so you can do it all again. Maybe we got to be working. I love your work ethic. It's okay that you went ahead. 
uh, from now on, that we can't make this, we can't uh, allow this to happen, okay? But do like, treat it like a try too, okay? Go back, check your work, all right? Can I actually see what you have so far? I mean, since you are done, let me see. Is that only one strategy? <gasps> I was planning to do it here. <gasps> and you thought you were done? Yikes, big P? No, it took up all of my time because I did this. It took me forever to do this. I'm really excited to see the new strategy that you come up with, okay? I got to see more. And also, organize your, organize your page a little neater. You know, utilize your space better. We have about 12 minutes left. Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. it's, an, uh, it's in a separate packet in that same list. Sorry, Mr. Fontanez, we had, we had technical difficulties with the breakout rooms going to break out again i don't know where it's, i was, I was like what, what happened <laughs> and i'm like everyone's gonna be like what's going on yeah, yeah, yeah. no nothing's happening we're figuring it out okay all right i just want to make sure there's a teacher in every room and that's a breakout room one all right ivanka i see you hey ivanka let's get our pencil right back to paper so, oh wow, we got a really hard working group in here. Paul G, PG setting the tone. Brian, we don't send messages unless there's a, unless you are given permission to do so. Thank you, Brian. Can I actually see your work now? You can put it against the screen, okay? Uh, Well, can you circle your final answer, please? And Brian, we do have a packet for number stories, so your work, this work shouldn't be done on blank piece of paper. All right, just for future reference, okay? Can, I, can you circle your final answer? Uh, Brian, I'm, please, I can't, you didn't circle your final answer, but I can't see it. Circle it, point to it, help me out. All right, Brian, I'll come back to you when you're ready. Big P, what's going on? Um, if you want to... Um, just a recommendation. If you want to, um, if you're gonna show your work, you could, you could just, you could, you could just, um, flip the screen, flip the camera, and then you could, and then you could show it because, um, on my screen it says, it says, it says a symbol that you could flip the, you could flip the camera on it so that you could, so you could show the work to, you, so that the, so that everybody could show your work to you. Okay, cool. Thanks for the hint, Paul. I appreciate we appreciate your support. It's very, very helpful. Let's see. Let's go to try to make sure. Prince, how those strategies coming along? We're getting a little more done. Right? Give me a thumbs up if we're getting more done. More paint pencil to paper. Okay. Camilla, can you hear me? What equation do you think matches this problem? I think the equation. I think the equation that matches this problem is, um, per, I did parentheses times, um, parentheses two times twelve, parentheses, then times eight equals c, um, for candy. Excellent job! I love how you have a labeled variable. Beautiful work. Make sure you, uh, make sure I uh, use that equation in all your work and show me as many different ways as you can as you can solve that, okay? I'm really excited to see your work. Show me when you're done. 
Um, how do I, where'd you go? I'm trying to pause it. Let's see. Hey, Brian, how are we doing? You ready to show me your work now? No, still going? All right. I like your shirt, buddy. Keep up your good work. Jalen, talk to me. How are we doing? Um, I think I got, I got an answer. I'm going to do more charges, but I got an answer. Show me very discreetly. Very, very discreetly. Ms. Coleman, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm trying to troubleshoot how to check their answers without like actually like kind of sharing out their work. But go, Jim. Hide it, hide it, hide it, hide it, hide it. Good job. Excellent work. That looks great. Make sure you, I make sure you're... Have you tried having them put it up to the screen so you can get a sense of what they're doing? Yeah, I just did that right now. And I okay. do it, but it's like, I don't want them to like see each other's answers, but I, I was trying to think of another more discreet way to do that. Yeah. I think if they, if they keep working and their eyes stay down and you just call one of them, it should be probably okay. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, Ava. Okay. Eva, you there? Show me your work. What we got? Let's put it up to the screen, okay? The screen's foggy, I can't really see. All right, we got about five minutes left. We're going to bring it back very soon. Hello? Hey, you're, you're going to bring So when we call back E, not Ivanka, Camilla. I'm done. Go. Can you show me your work, please? Because I know you have the accurate equation. For my second try, I found I found my mistake. Okay, good. Let's all make sure we're all, all eyes are. Oh, you found a mistake even better. So let's all make sure our eyes are glued to Cam right now, since she shows us her work. So I had to tell Jay, uh, not Jay, Jalen's really tracking, right? I see big. All right, welcome back. Welcome back to our whole group. Uh, I was really, really happy with some of the strategies that I saw, especially the level of investment, making sure that we were answering the question that was uh, being asked and a lot of labeled work. I don't know about you, Ms. Kinute, but I was seeing it all over my team and it was really, really exciting to see. I'm going to make sure you're unmuted. Can you hear me, Ms. Kinute? Yeah, I, yeah, I also I had to give a few reminders, but um, um, accuracy looked really strong in my group too. Good. So, Ms. Knut said, do you have? Would you like? You want to get started with your scholar, and I can chart their strategy as we go. We're just gonna share one scholar, so you can go ahead and share um whoever you picked. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Cam, let's put Cam on. Can we? Can um, is the full screen you or me right now? Um, it's you, but I can spotlight whoever. It, it's pretty much who's talking, so whoever you call on, I think you okay. can spotlight it automatically. So I'm just going to grab Mark real quick, and I want Cam, Camilla, to show us her strategy that she did. Uh, specifically, the level of investment that she had is really, really impressive. So, so I want to chart what Cam has done on her paper. So Cam, can you walk me through what you did for uh, to solve this problem?
Let's see. Sorry, Mr. Keats, I forgot that I was doing. No, you're fine. Uh, where is Kim? Who are you looking for? Camilla. There she is. Sorry about that. Um, my revision or my first try? Uh, your first try. That got you the right answer. Um, the, the, um, strategy that I did first was that, mm -hmm. um, I did, um, my, my equation was, the first thing I did was my equation, which was parentheses, two times 12 parentheses times eight equals C for candy. Good. I see. I, that's what one thing that I love, Miss Kinuta, is that she had one, she had a variable, right? Not just, mm -hmm. just like a question mark, right? We just want to be really careful. She put a C to represent candy. But yep. the, fourth grade math. No, this, like, how do you got the, uh, the other part of your equation and like what these numbers represent? Yeah. I put two for layers. Um, 12, yeah. um, 12 for candy in each B for box. And eight the boxes. And then this is the boxes. Cool. Excellent. So now talk, walk me what you uh, did next. I love the label the equation. So important. The thing that I did first was distributive, distributive property. And I did, and I did 10, I meant two times 10, which equal 20. And I got the two from the layers and the 10 from part of um, my, from my 12. And before I did it, I did, I did 12 and then I did 12 and then I broke the 10 um, and the two apart. Okay, so you you broke down the, the 12 by its value. Okay, I see what you did now. Keep going. Tell me what you did next. Um, then two, t two times two was four, and then I added it, and I got 24. What does this represent, the 24? Make sure when we're speaking in terms of numbers, and this goes for all of us, right? These aren't just numbers. They mean something. Always connect it back to the problem. So what does this 24 actually represent here? The 24 that represents here is um, the total of candies in each eight boxes. In, in what? In each eight boxes. So can you be more specific or be more uh, clear? What do you mean by that? That there's um, 20, 24 candies in each box. Oh, I was kidding. when you said each, like eight, but I don't know if you meant you were talking total, all right? Okay, be very, very close. There's total, 24 total candy in each box. And then I, based on your equation, you're going to multiply 24 by eight. Why is that? Um, I did that because since there, since there are eight boxes, 24 has to go in each, in, um, in, in each um box and i know when i see each that's why um i i box i boxed it out because in because i know each means maybe um multiple um maybe multiplying oh, excellent excellent so, so now what are we do, what are we going to do here now how did you solve this part this last part to get the total amount of candy so since I didn't know directly what was 24 times eight, then I did distributive property again, and I did eight times 20, which equals 160, and four times eight, which equals um, 30, 32. And then I added, and then I added it up, and my my final answer were was 192 candies in each box. I mean, I meant um, 192 candies in total. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you got 192 candies? Miss Kirita, let's see how many of us got 192 candies. You can do it digitally. 
Let's do it digitally so it's, it's a little bit clearer for everyone to see. Brian, Yannick, Krishalyn, Eugene, Tristan, Paula. Oh, that's really exciting. And I, what I really liked about Cam's work was that she really focused on this thing that I, I, I said it right here, right? The distributive property, right? The distributive property is when we use multiplication based on the values of each digit. And this is such a good strategy, especially when you're doing uh, one by two digit multiplication or two by two digit multiplication. But the distributive property is just one of the methods that we can use. But I really wanted you guys to highlight this because it's just quick math, right? Two times 12, and maybe you don't know off the top of your head, but I know two times 10 is 20, and two times two is one. When we add those together, we'll get the actual total, which is going to be 24 for that example. But the actual answer here we got is 192 candies. So the big takeaway that we learned today was the distributive property. Can someone tell me what is the distributive property and when we can actually use it? Of mathematical problems. Let's see, if someone has a sign digital hand to help me solve these here. Let's go, Ooh, so many calm vertical hands, it's tough, it's tough. I'm gonna go with Markel. Markel, you're unmuted, all right, bud? The property is um, a bunch of numbers that are equations, and you're adding those equations together to get your, to get your answer. Can you be more? Can you be more specific about the a bunch of like? What do you What do you mean by that? Like um, equations by by um, like one plus one, a bunch of like one plus one, and then you're adding all of those, all all of those, all of those one plus ones equals two. You're adding all of those two to get to your to your numbers. What what do we think for us, Gray? Do we agree? Do we disagree? Kinda agree? Right? Okay, good. What makes it good, 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 good. I see Cam agreeing. Great job, Cam. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So the distributive property, big takeaway. It's multiplication based on the values of digits. And it's very, very helpful when we're doing one by two digit multiplication. All right. And always Start with your label, the equation really makes sense of this problem and always makes sense of the numbers and connect it back to your problem. All right, so, uh, Ms. Ms. Knutu, I feel like I have enough time for another strategy. Yeah, we have about eight minutes, seven minutes. We can either try another strategy or we can go back into our breakout room so that scholars can revise or try the distributive property if they, have any, if they didn't use that strategy. Uh, do you want to just do breakout rooms? Yeah, let's break out and have Scar yeah. either revise or um, try the new strategy that they just saw charted. Okay. Yeah, I think I would have enough time for two. Room four. Alex, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, wait, give me a thumbs up if you got 192. Digitally, of course. I need to be new. Digital thumbs up if we got 192. Ryan, is it a digital thumbs up or no? So, Paul, you got 192? Um, Lacey, what about you? I'm to... right, so like everybody got 192. How would this work look different if I was using the area model? Let's go, Paul, what do you think? This, 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 I don't know what you but this will look different. Here, stop, because I'm going to tell you right now what I said. All right, I paused you. What I said was how it would look different if it was the area model. Okay. I actually use the area model, area model myself. So I'm going to start. I show us the area model then. Show us as you explain, okay? Well, what you do is that first you will obviously draw the area from your body prints, and that, then you would then you then you would you would split up and, I mean, four it's twenty and four because you don't because you don't know twenty four so. 
It's so bad. You can make one more by eight times twenty, and you will get a hundred and sixty. And then you multiply times four to get the two. Then you see then you would add here, Paul. So it's a little difficult to hear you right now, Paul. Okay, so I'm going to try to open up the floor a little bit. I don't know why it's. Okay. Paul, can you try again? Yeah. Go ahead. It's much better. Go ahead, Paul. I'm sorry. Then, then you would do. Then you would. Do um then you will add a hundred and sixty with thirty two and to get and then you will and then you will have to add six well zero plus two equals zero and then six plus three equals a nine and one plus zero equals one so you get a hundred and ninety two. Oh, very good, very very straightforward. Good. This is a very very straightforward problem, but. It's a, this is a multi-step problem. Why, what makes this a multi-step problem? And why is it so important that we invest when we have these multi-step problems? Full trans tracking, let's go Jalen. Well, I'm proud, Jed. It's a multi-step problem because I think it's asking us for two answers technically because number one, it's asking us the, there are two layers of candies and there's 12 candies in each layer. So it's asking us, how much candies are in each box. And then it's asking us to multiply eight boxes to see how much candy are. Yeah, cool. excellent job. Boxes. Excellent job. Uh, Great work today, scholars. Our main focus of today. First, I need everyone in their seats just so I, I can see them, please. And bodies calm like Ivanka. There she is. She's concentrated. Ready to go, Big P. Clocked in, focused all day. So is Prince and Brian. Great job today. So today we learned about the distributive property and and practice with multi-step word problems. Um, I think what made Camilla's strategy so successful is the way she really broke down the problem. She made sense of it as she was really going. Uh, Ivanka, I love how you're so silently celebrating, Camilla, uh, Cammy. Great job. Uh, well deserved because she really made sense of the problem as she was going, and that's what allowed her to understand. That there was a thing she had to do first, which is find out the amount per boxes, the amount of candy per box, and then multiply that number by eight so we can figure out how many total. So we're actually answering the question. All right. But what is the distributive property? We were talking about it all day today, but who can actually tell me what it is and why and when we can use it? Let's go, Ryan. Go ahead, Ryan. Distributive property, distributive property is when you break up numbers so it can be easier. For you, like to divide or multiply, or like, like, add, 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 like, can you repeat that? How do we break break up these numbers by their? We break up these numbers by their. We break up these numbers by like their. Are you? you think they know? Yeah, great job, right? Way to stick with it, but I'm proud of you. Right by their values. I'm gonna give you a challenge problem right now to solve. You have two minutes to do so. 1072 times nine. A nice little CP on the bottom here, a little challenge problem. One thousand seventy-two times nine. Go ahead. Division or multiplication? Multiplication. I'm gonna un I'm gonna unmute you guys. Don't speak unless you have the answer. But when as soon as you get it, call it out. Uh, yeah. No. Let's see. I guess. Uh, <laughs> No, couldn't, couldn't stay silent, couldn't handle it. Unfortunately, you gotta give me a thumbs up when you get the right answer. 
I know. I saw that we're going back to the we're going back to the main classroom, uh, Cam. If that's what you're going to tell me, I saw. Oh, you guys have found answer, Cam. Um, what was their number again? Oh, sorry, you can't see it. 1,072 times 9. Use the distributive property solve. Brian, you got the answer? What's the answer, Brian? 9,648. Let's go, Brian. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Brian. All right, so, Brian, good job. Okay, Mr. Fontanez, I think we're all back, so you can close out. Excellent. Well, great job. Uh, so today in number stories, we've solved a multi-step word problem involving two by one digit multiplication using the thing called the distributive property, right? Which is when we break numbers. I'm going to see if I can do a call response here, Ms. Knute, right? Let's just, mm -hmm. You guys are all perfectly silent. Not a sound, right? I'm going to unmute you guys. And now I'm going to say, when I say the correlative response, you guys are going to do it, all right? We all break with distributive properties when we break numbers down by their, by their value. You guys said it's kind of quick. Uh -huh. The by their values. Great job. And it's such a good strategy to use, especially when we're doing multiplication with larger numbers. Um, Brian, as well, I gave Brian a really special challenge problem. One, 72 times nine, and he got me the correct answer. Was, uh, Brian, what was the correct answer for the challenge problem you got? 9,648. Great job, Brian. That's why scholars in fourth grade, one of the strategies we use is the distributive property. Thank you, Ms. Kirutet.